Hey everyone, Suns from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome back to Mozzie Monday. And today we're going to cover the topic of taxi and takeoff. So, let's get rolling. The first of the pre taxi checks that we need to carry out is a check of the air pressure. You'll probably have noticed that 200 pounds per square inch is key in the Mosquito. If the pressure is low, ensure that the pump is definitely building up pressure. If it is not, the aircraft should not be flown. The next step is to contact the ground crew. They need to remove the chocks and the undercarriage locking caps. The undercarriage locking caps are removed and replaced by dust caps. Contacting the ground crew is exactly the same process as highlighted in the startup video. Open the port window and press the PTT comms button to access the menu. Select option 8, followed by option 4, and finally option 2. The final pre-taxi check is of the flaps. The dial should read fully up and the selector handle should be in the center neutral position. Let's taxi to the runway and to get started we need to release the wheel brakes and apply power to get us rolling. Taxiing the mozzie is very similar to the Spitfire if you own that module and requires brake rudder and throttle inputs. Depressing your rudder pedals followed by short inputs using the brake handle will help turn the aircraft in the desired direction. Our first pre-takeoff check is associated with the elevator trim and is dependent upon how heavily the aircraft is loaded. The setting also depends on whether flaps are being used for takeoff assistance. With the flaps up, a lightly loaded aircraft will require half a division of nose heavy trim, highlighted on the elevator trim panel to our left. Secondly, and again with flaps up, a heavily loaded aircraft will require one division of nose heavy trim. The third and final elevator trim setting is associated purely with flap usage at 15 degrees down and is equally applicable to both lightly and heavily loaded aircraft. In this instance, one and a half divisions of nose heavy trim must be applied. A point to note, if flaps are being used for takeoff assistance, they can be set to a maximum of 25 degrees down for takeoff and should only be lowered after clearing the engines and turning into wind, with both engines throttled to the same idling speed. Next on the checklist is the rudder trim, which must be set slightly right, which it is by default in a hot start aircraft. The final trim setting to check is the aileron, which should be set to neutral. The small diamond above the dial should be in the centre neutral position. Moving to our left, we must check the propeller speed controls are in the fully forward position. This should be a visual check as you set them fully forward during the startup procedure. Fuel checks are next, and we have to make sure that we have sufficient fuel for the sortie by checking the gauges on junction box B to our right. Now we ensure the fuel cocks are set to outer tanks, which are situated behind the pilot's seat. Again, this formed part of the startup procedure 
so only a visual check should be required. Now we move on to the flap settings. As we are lightly loaded today, we won't be using flaps. However, I will show you their operation quickly. To use the flap handle, we first need to operate the latch, which allows us to move it. We can now raise or lower the flaps as desired. To achieve your preferred setting, you simply monitor the flaps position on the indicator dial and stop the process once your target angle has been achieved. For example, 15 degrees down. We lower the flaps handle and as soon as we see the dial registering 15 degrees, we raise the handle to stop the process. The final two checks form part of the startup procedure, so they should be visual only. Firstly, the supercharger. The switch should be in the down position for low gear. And the radiators should be open. So the checks are now complete and we can take off. Pull your stick back while suppressing the brake handle. Now slowly and smoothly apply throttle to 3000 RPM with between 16 to 18 pounds of boost pressure maximum. The boost pressure must be reduced to 12 pounds per square inch as soon after takeoff as possible. Now release the brakes. As soon as you are travelling in a straight line down the runway in excess of 34 miles per hour, allow the control column to move forward slightly, approximately half an inch. As soon as the tail lifts, the aircraft should start to rotate and to assist you can apply a little back pressure if required. Now that you are airborne, the landing gear must be raised. 1. Activate the wheel brakes. 2. Release the undercarriage locking mechanism. And 3. Raise the landing gear. We can now reduce our RPMs to 2850 by adjusting our propeller speed controls. Also, we must reduce our boost pressure to 9 pounds per square inch using throttle inputs. Now trim the aircraft for a steady climb to 1000 feet. Once at your desired altitude, you can trim for level flight and reduce the RPMs to 2650, which is the ideal cruising RPM. Also reduce your boost pressure to 7 pounds per square inch using slow and gentle throttle inputs. And that concludes this taxi and takeoff introduction. So thank you for watching and I will catch you all later.